Yeah, a hundred percent. I agree with that a hundred percent. So it comes across, comes across. It, it's an, it's a verbal thing. It's somewhere in your, somewhere in your voice or in your lead generation that you're just not comfortable. And somewhere in there, it, it causes you not to get that appointment. So I completely agree with you, Alan. That's, that's a huge key uh, is knowing the next steps for your clients when they're working with you, when you're talking to them, if you're not really comfortable with the next step, how would they be? Right. Um, when you're, when you're actually get a listing, when you get a listing, the first thing you should do is tell them, here's what to expect in our next step. This gives them confidence that you know what you're doing and then they can move forward with a comfortable confidence that you're the right agent for the job because you can get a listing and then lose it quickly because you didn't convey the information that they needed. They want to feel comfortable. That's your job is to make them feel as though you're the right professional for the job. And this leads right into making a successful lead um, seller presentation. So as we're, let me minimize you guys. Sorry. I'd like to see your reactions at the same time, but I want to see this um, screen as well. So as we're looking at lead generation for buyers, um, what does that mean to you? How do we lead generate for buyers and sellers? And everybody's going to do this a little differently, but let me hear your forms of lead generation. Yeah, if you got your hand up, just unmute yourself. Well, um, I'm new on this, and I am. Well, I was attending class and learning, you know, uh, uh, with Johns, the Johns, and you. Mm -hmm. um, what I am doing is uh, contacting my friends. Okay. Uh, I'm um, I'm contacting friends and not to find them that now I'm a, a, on a real estate and um, of course knowing how they are doing right now and also um, informing them about my business and asking their help to their help to um, if they are um, in the near future um, uh, uh, buying a, or investing uh, something here in Florida to contact me and also asking them if they has, they know anybody that um, it's uh, interested to contact me and for them to help me. Okay. Yeah. And so that's it. You're helping them. They're helping you. This is a relationship, right? Yes. Yeah. And so that's, that's the focus. And yeah, it doesn't, so this can be, you know, right now, this is phone calls, right? I normally would say this is phone calls. This is going to be groups that you belong to. And still, we can still separate them out, right? You can still contact your church group or your PTA group. And what do those phone calls sound like? Well, we've been working on those for a long time now. You can still reach out to those people that you've reached out to before and just do it in blocks, right? Now I'm going to call my sphere of influence that are just my friends and family. Right now, I'm going to call those people that I used to work with in whatever businesses that I that I was involved in uh, over the past few years. Now I'm going to call this group that I went to church with, and now I'm going to call this group that I was in the PTA with. Now I'm going to call this group that was the and I'm just saying these things because I want to jog your memory and jog your mind to think about the people that are in your lives that would help you grow your business. Right, so softball, baseball, things that your kids belong to, things that you belong to. I don't care which type of group it was. People that have done businesses or services, call those small businesses. How's things going? You know, anything I can do to help you, right? Um, people are still needing services. I'm actually, you know, making some phone calls to start growing a list of vendors while I have this time. And I thought about you today. Right. Because, you know, people still need landscaping. They still need these services. And, you know, they want to make sure that they're dealing with somebody they can trust. So I'm putting together a list of trusted vendors. Um, is it OK if I add you to that list? They'll say yes. OK, cool. 
I'll be making sure that when I when I talk with my next client, I'm going to email this list and your name's going to be on it. In the meantime, if you're talking to anybody who has a need, maybe they want to buy or sell real estate, would you recommend me? You're going to get a yes. You're going to get a yes. So now it's time to add that person into your database. Right? So you can add that person to your database now and go ahead and get them on a neighborhood nurture. Hey, by the way, where do you live? Oh, okay, what subdivision? Cool, I can send you out some information about your specific subdivision, tell you who's selling homes, what's going on in there. Would that be helpful? People open that mail. I promise you they open that mail, guys. Um, as a real estate agent myself, I get emails from Zillow and Redfin and Realtor.com. I can do a CMA on my house, right? So can you. But when I get that email and, and it's telling me what they think my home is worth, I open it immediately. Why? Because I'm curious to know what they think my home is worth. So that stuff is a super high open rate, guys. If you're not taking advantage of that, you should be right now. So the goal of this um, edition of Spark is to get your first appointment uh, within two weeks and set uh, set you up for signing the first contract in 30 days. Um, and this is how you begin to achieve the life that you imagine that you would get out of real estate. And that's for your, for some of you newer guys um, who haven't gotten a transaction yet. Um, for those of you who are more seasoned and been in the business longer, the focus of this is to really work on um, thinking about how you're going to lead generate. And going through the processes and the systems and getting your head acclimated and getting the right mindset around it. So um, you'll work on this part of your business every single day, right? You're going to build your database day by day um, because that is the lifeblood of your business. And yeah, every morning we're practicing role playing, right? So if we're practicing role playing and then we don't get on the phone, in this case, that's, that's what we got, guys. So I usually say, because phones are my thing, I usually say, get on the phone. What? Well, that's a placeholder for me because you may do different types of lead gen. Maybe you go out and you're face-to-face -face and you're shaking hands and you're kissing babies. Maybe you're doing that. And now we, you know, hey, don't kiss my baby. It's a little different, right? We've got to change in things. So uh, right now it's the phones, which makes it easy because then I don't have to explain myself. Um, and we're going to contact prospective clients, you know, and we're going to do that in a caring, different kind of way. But it's going to be in a caring, how are you type of way. How does this affect your business? And the key to that, and John mentioned this yesterday and it bears repeating, um, the key to that is how is your business? How are you guys doing business? It prompts them to ask about you. They want to say, you know what, oh, okay, we're doing this and that. What are, you, what are you guys doing? When I talked to people yesterday, they asked me, what are you guys doing? And I explained to them, this is how we're still helping people because we, there's still some people who have a need to buy or sell. And for those people that are really involved and invested in buying or selling a piece of real estate, we're here for them. Who do you know? that might be interested in buying a cell. Like that conversation, I'm okay to have that because they gave me a, the checkered flag. They said, go ahead, I'm gonna ask you, go. And so, I, so I'll go ahead and ask them. And they go, yeah, I'll definitely refer them to you. Cool, because you know, now that you know, and I've got you on a video call, and you know that I can do that with you, it makes them more comfortable recommending you when you've explained to them how you're able to still process a transaction. Um, so we're gonna work on this goal every day. Uh, we're gonna establish the core activities uh, and the habits that we'll use the, uh, during your entire real estate career. Um, and when, when we get the lead generation portion done and we do it correctly, we're gonna focus on running your business. Right, so that leads to the next step. Right, we've got lead generation. Um, now we've got a pipeline. Now we've got some people who are in it, and now we've got somebody who is ready to move forward. So then we're going to start to focus on market your listings, and this is every day. Every day, once you get a listing, this is every day. How do I sell my client's property? Right, 
in this case, we've got show buyers of houses. So we've used some strategies. Um, who's got listings right now that are wondering, what do I do to get those homes sold? Unmute yourself and share. Well, I have a, I have a new listing right now. Um, and it is tenant occupied. The seller has pictures that he took from when he was renting it out. Okay. Um, and does not want to bother the ex bother the current tenant um, by having a photographer come in and everything like that. So that's actually going to hamper my the way I present the home. Okay. So. Uh, my next conversation I have with this gentleman, the seller is going to be today is, well, then I'm going to need for you to do a video walkthrough uh, of the property. So I mean, maybe you just walk around and just do a video of it. Um, but like, we're going to have to do things, we're going to have to do things a little bit differently than, than what we're used to the way we've traditionally done business. Yeah. So no doubt um, you've got to do something different um, in order to get, that and so we know Matterport is another thing that people are using in order to go ahead and market their listing. Kind of gives the people, if you haven't seen this, guys, um, get on get on a uh, search for Matterport and start looking at the video walkthroughs that this thing creates. It's a powerful tool to have somebody really tell whether they've got interest in a property because it really gives you a feeling like you're walking through the house. Now that will generate enough interest. Uh, from the right buyer, we're, as we talked about yesterday, we're really looking for the highly motivated right now, right? So if somebody's got a need to move and there's a property that matches everything they're looking for, they've got a great Matter Matterport video um, and they can feel themselves in this house and the house is priced really correctly, this is going to give you a much larger chance of getting that property sold. So that's showing buyers houses. Marketing your listings, yeah. So we talked with Jen yesterday. She had a new listing that she's trying to market. She's doing a really good job. She's doing reverse prospecting. She's doing everything she can to make sure. And, and do everything you can. And don't forget to update your clients. Tell them what you're doing on a daily basis. Hey, you know what? Um, we just put this property here. Uh, matter of fact, I talked with a bunch of agents yesterday and I got them to all share it on my face on their Facebooks also to help market the property. Let them know each day what you're doing, especially in this market. We have to like over contact that that seller and really let them know that we're on their side and we're doing things every day and that our focus every day when we wake up is to sell their home. All right. So we're going to move into from there. We get a buyer, and then we're going to move into negotiating contact, contact, uh, contracts. So negotiating the contracts, we're going to touch on that. Transaction management to closing. So trans transaction management to closing. How many people, by a show of hands, are doing your own transaction management? I don't see any hands, and that's very exciting to me because I don't want to see you guys doing any transaction management. Um, you should be growing your database. You should be lead generating every day and have somebody else handle your transaction. I made the mistake of handling my first four transactions, which all took place within a span of three weeks. And that was a huge mistake. It cost me another, I don't know, last one closed in May and I didn't get paid again until July because I let my pipeline dry up while taking care of these four transactions. It was a huge mistake. Alan, I see you unmuted yourself. So what, what do you have to share? Yes, I was just wanted to add that <clears throat> hiring a TC was one of the best things I did for my business. Yeah, so how did that help you in your, in your you know, words? Well, so it just saved me a bunch of time that I didn't have to focus on existing business and I could focus on creating new business. Yeah. And that's the key. John, you had something to add? Yeah. So what I, what I used to tell people, um, I used to tell my, I used to tell the agents is you want to do your first transaction by yourself just to get an idea of exactly what's happening. And so you know the steps and you know exactly what to expect. 
Um, and then I quickly realized, um, no, that's, that's not our job at all. Don't, you know, don't uh, do your own transaction. Always give a transaction to a transaction coordinator. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you lots of time. Remember, our job is to find new business. Our job is not to chase down condo association estoppel letters, right? Our job is not to chase down missing initials, right? We make money by finding new business. So now what I say is get a transaction coordinator. Yeah, I don't care if you, even your very first deal and all you got to do is just ask your transaction coordinator, um, hey, can you hold my hand so I'm aware of all the steps and what's going on? Communicate with me so I know what's happening, all right? But yeah, I will never do another deal without having a transaction coordinator. Yeah, 100%. So, so what we're looking at here um, is what successful agents do every day, right? And so this is, this is the model, guys. Um, two types of activities. Grow your business, run your business, right? Um, and we've kind of gone through some of the stuff. Vendor management. This, this is something that you should all have a list of vendors so that when your client needs some help with something, so we're going to walk through their properties when we're listing their property, and we're going to go, you know what? I see that this, maybe this popcorn on this ceiling, it looks like there was, you know, some damage here, an old leak. Can you explain what that was? And let them explain it. If it's something that can be repairable, repair it. Have them say, you know, if I was you, right, I would do something to repair this. There's a crack in this wall. It looks like there was water there. Um, there is a separation in this ceiling. We should probably get that patched. This area looks like it was damaged. We got two different paints here. Let's just paint the whole wall. These are things that are going to come back when buyers come to see the property. They're going to create question marks. And I always tell them the worst thing that we can have when buyers are looking at your house is question marks. If you've got one little spot or stain in your ceiling, the client is now walking through your house, whether it's video or FaceTime or whatever, they're walking through your house now looking at the ceilings and not looking at the benefits that your house has to offer. So let's fix the little things that we can and get them out of the way because then we get a shark that smells blood in the water. We're going to have to explain away everything that comes up or they're not focused on the right things in your property. So have a list of vendors, painters, carpenters, lawn guys, landscapers, have those people ready so that when your clients need help, you're the resource. All right. So we go about setting goals every day. You're, you're, you're focused on your daily goal, weekly goal, monthly goal. And for those of you in the uh, productivity coaching, you've got your goals set. Um, for those of you who are not, if you don't have goals yet, you've got to set goals, right? Weekly, monthly, and daily. Um, compliance and risk management. This is fairly, um, fairly, vague in this module, but we have a compliance in our office. They're going to take a look at your contracts once you get them going. Um, you're, you're all licensed, so you know what we're ultimately looking at, but I want, to, I want to just focus on one thing because I've been dealing with a few agents who have had some issues with this latest turn of events. Um, now is the time, now is not the time to kind of work it out. Now is the time to really get solid sound advice, right? So if you're not sure about something, Title Alliance has a attorney. Um, if, you're, if you're working with a buyer, you should be using Title Alliance. Their attorney is on your side. We have Richard Bass to go ahead and, and refer questions to. This is not the time to ad lib on the contracts. It's time to make sure that they're solid and that you're gonna close or that your addendums that you're thinking about putting in are actually going to fly all the way to the end. So now is the time to reach out and get coaching on this stuff. Get coached by Richard, get coached by Title Alliance um, attorney, or get coached from your coaches. Um, attending training and coaching. Look, there's no excuse not to be in training and coaching right now. There's so many things that are available to us. And when I say us, you know, John and I are on multiple calls a day, just growing our um, intellect into this new market. And you should be too. Um, managing money, we all know what that is. At the end of the day, 
um, we've got to make sure that we're a good fiduciary to our clients with their monies, right? Um, make sure that escrows are reaching where they need to be. Make sure that rental deposits are in on time. Make sure that everything is going where it's supposed to. Um, so understanding lead generation. Any, any questions regarding any of the stuff that I covered at, the, uh, at this moment or not? Or just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask. I must be an awesome instructor. Nobody has any questions. No, awesome. I do have plenty of questions. It's just that I think it's time consuming. So I, I would rather leave it at the end. So I'm just putting notes down, you know, and like Well, if it's module by module, it might be helpful and we can see whether or not we can answer them right now. Um, okay. But just go ahead and ask. Okay, so like the transaction management, uh, th these are all new things to me. So it's like a foreign language. I'm like, okay, what's that? What's, what's, um, what's who's transaction coordinator? What are they doing for you? <laughs> like, what's all that about, you know? So these are just like, like for me, fresh, you know, it's a brand new language. Okay. John, you want to cover that for a second while I yeah. Um, yeah. move so, on to the next? So the tr when we talk about transaction management, we're talking about your, we lead generate to find a buyer, to find a seller. Uh, then we show them homes, we market their home. Then we write an offer or we negotiate an offer. And then once we have a buyer and a seller signature on the same contract, we're officially under contract. Okay. okay. Now from that point all the way to closing might take anywhere between 30 to 45 days. Okay. And um, it's a lot of, it's, it's almost like being a project manager at that point. All right. Oh. So rather than you doing the contract to close all those little details, hire a transaction coordinator. All right. We, the one we use, um, the one that Mike and I use, they charge us $3.99 for $3.95 for each transaction. And that's a flow through expense that I pass right back to my, my seller or my buyer. Um, I mm. so my commission technically is three percent plus three ninety five. That three ninety five is the transaction coordinator fee, um, and basically the client is the one that's paying for my admin for that transaction. Okay. So I get I get free help. Okay. <laughs> but that's that's what the transaction coordinator is. That's what the transaction management is. It's it's everything that happens from contract to close. All right, and Alan is going to recommend a good one too. This charges three fifty, and only charges if property closes. I'm going with that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. So, thank you, John. Um, so, the total time for this course is four hours, and we're going to go over the hour of instruction, um, and then you're going to focus on what your rest of your agenda is for the day. So, we go over the lead general generation model. And then you're going to lead generate. Okay, that's your next um, that's your next thing that you're going to do. When we get off this call, you've already done scripts and role play. We've already done that with John in the morning at 8:30. Um, then we're going to lead generate. Uh, so we're going to make the phone calls that we we spoke about earlier, and you're going to speak to your database, or you're going to speak to your sphere. And the goal in speaking to your sphere is to go ahead and add people to your database. Somebody unmute yourself and tell me what that looks like. What is a good database call where you've ended up with a result and what is that result that we want to build our database? Tell me what we need to get from that phone call. Um, a name and an email. Okay, what else? A number. Um, address. An address. Yes. All right, so that's what we're looking for. So we are focused in order to make this a good call, in order to make this an opportunity now that we can put in our database and have 100% health. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, John, 100% health is going to be, we have their name. Obviously we have their phone number. We've got their email address and we've got a home address. And that should and, be 100%. Go ahead, John. I believe it's also, um, birthday and put them on a neighborhood that that makes it 100%. Yes. 
Okay, so the address will probably give you the neighborhood, but if you can get a birthday, where can we get birthdays if we don't want to, like we can't feel kind of stalky asking them, where can we get that? Facebook. Come on, guys, think. Facebook, yes, that's correct. That's exactly where you get those, those pieces of information. You'll also get information like, you know, it'll show you a picture of them and their family. And don't be weird about it, you know, say, hey, listen, I decided to call you today. I was going through Facebook because, like, what else are we supposed to be doing with this whole thing going on? Like, you, it's topical, right? This whole thing's going on. I'm scrolling through Facebook. Apparently, because your phone number is in my phone, uh, they put it up there as, you know, you're a potential friend suggestion, you know, and that's why I decided to give you a call. How's the family? We're going to have a Ford sandwich conversation. Yeah, I see you got uh, two little girls. Yeah, what are their names? How old are they? Right? And you get their names and you start going ahead and typing away and putting that information into your database. Now, when you call back in three months, hey, how are the girls doing? Oh, this one's in soccer. This one's in cheerleading. Awesome. That sounds fantastic. And you'll take those things into the future. Right? So spring break was kind of ruined. What were you guys planning on doing if it didn't get ruined? Were you going somewhere? You know, what's the next trip you have planned after this thing is over? Take those notes because now when you call them in three months and you put them on a smart plan and you call them in three months, hey, did you guys ever get to go to that trip we talked about? So this is building that relationship. And that's the key to this business. It's all about relationships. That makes you the organic choice to help them buy or sell real estate when they're ready. And everybody's going to do that at some point or another. So in order to do that correctly, and John, I just lost everybody. I'm not sure what's going on. Are we still on the call? Yep. I see everyone. Okay. Everyone is still there and yep, everyone's good. Okay. Now I see you. Now I see you. You're back. Um, at any rate, so, so that's the key right now is just focusing on those relationships. Am I muted? Nope. I'm muted. You're good. I'm muted. Anyway, so that's the key is focusing on those relationships um, and daily habits, right? Daily habits is script and role play, build your database. Well, should it, it's got it here in the wrong order, in my opinion. Um, but you're going to do your script practice, um, those dialogues. Some people don't like the word script. Um, at the end of the day, there's structured conversations that have a predictable result and an outcome that you that you are uh, hoping to attain, right? Um, you're going to do your lead generation from there, and from there you're going to build your database. Um, and in this course, we're going to have once we're back in office, um, and we're going to figure out how we do this online, and we're going to get some contract practice in there as well. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll be teaching that. Our broker will be teaching that. Um, or who will, be, who will be teaching that, but we'll be going to be teaching some contract practice because I, my other aha in talking with agents in the past few days that need some help is even agents that have been in the business for a while um, have difficulty sitting down with a client face-to-face -face and explaining the contract. If you can explain it and show that you have knowledge of the contract, you can put a lot of things to bed so that you don't have to sit there and read the entire contract with the client word for word if they have some concerns. If you know it really well, you can just say this is about that and, and do it with authority so that you don't need to go through the whole thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've all run into this where the people want to read it. And so if you explain it really well, uh, each odd item that they have questions about, because we've got tons of boilerplate standards that they want to read. And I just basically tell them, listen, this is great stuff to read when you having trouble sleeping at night right here. Okay. But this contract is designed to protect the buyers and sellers. It's been done and put together by dozens of lawyers to protect, protect both parties. What we're going to do is go ahead and just put the information in here in these boxes that pertains to this sale, right? Everything in here does not pertain to you. Go ahead and read the FERPTA part because you're not a foreign national and we don't have to worry about that. When you want to go to sleep, read that. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so at the end of the day, um, 
contract practice and those type of things are important. We just need to know how that works for us through a negotiating standpoint as well. Um, so, mm, lost you guys again. Give me one second. We hear and see you, Mike. Yeah, every time I switch to kind of move up and down with the slide, I kind of lose the picture of you guys. So I'm not sure if I'm talking to myself or not. So work in progress. So now we're focusing on the big picture on lead generation, right? So this is a this is the prospecting. So I got a question for you. Um, how is how is marketing working out right now? Anybody has any input on that? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Well, I've just been um, reaching my inner sphere so far. It, I, I kind of find it funny that as I'm trying to reach out to them and build a relationship with them, they're trying to, hey, do you want to work from home? Are you interested in doing stuff? And I'm like, but wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess everybody is on their grind, you know, and, and I can appreciate that, you know, so, so yeah. I, I, overall, yeah. I'm like, okay, so let me see how I can support your business. And um, this is my business as well. So, so it's been a funny um, um, conversation. <laughs> yeah, and that's the right message. Yeah, Mike, you know, one of the things about you asked about marketing is uh, a lot of the marketing that we have that's kind of set it and forget it marketing. Uh, that's not really taking account into account everything that's going on in the world right now. That's taking into account um, lower interest rates. It's take it's saying things like this is what your home might be worth and so forth. Blah 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 blah. And it's not a personal touch. All right. It's not. It it it, it almost sounds disingenuous. Right, the things that we have that's automatically those drip campaigns that's automatically uh, sending everything out to everybody. Um, as far as for paid advertising, paid marketing, and so forth, now now's not the time for that. Now is the time to make genuine connections, have genuine uh, conversations, and actually go out and find the buyers right now. The buyer and right now in a, in a shifting market, you don't want to spend all your money on billboards and bus benches okay and uh you know all that stuff because that's not what's happening right now nobody's driving around looking at billboards and bus benches we're all at home so now we got to just make telephone calls do it the old the old-fashioned way john can you see my screen now i do okay cool um all right so this is this is our lead generation uh prospect and marketing so right now and, and generally, this has always been my thing. Um, I want to be prospecting based and marketing enhanced. So prospecting based means that I, that's my focus. That's my everyday daily business. That's what I'm doing daily to generate people into my database, which then become leads. Those the we we move them from leads to contacts, connecting and offering. So what are we connecting with? What are we, we're, we're giving them the smart plans, right? So we're giving them a nature, uh, uh, a neighborhood nurture, right? So they're gonna open those emails. So that's one touch, right? And then we're gonna give them that quarterly phone call on top of it um, and send out a personal note, right? So you've got time guys, right now you've got nothing but time. To, to solidify these relationships that you're building with these people. Um, have a conversation that you, that you with somebody you haven't talked to in years. Reconnect and let it just be about that. Later on, you'll follow up, go into your command, put a follow-up phone call that maybe is a couple of weeks down the line, a, a month down the line, whatever the case may be, but find out where they live. Send them a personal note. Right, we're all connected these days. You can find out where anybody lives anytime unless they're in some kind of program. And then John DiMartino can find them. So don't worry about that too much. Um, so send a personal note. Think about the last time you got a personal note. And, and we talked about this, I don't know if it was 
what call it was on. Maybe it was in the productivity coaching group. Um, what happens when you receive a personal note? Because you get all that junk mail, you get all that stuff, and then you get a personal note. How does that make you feel? What do you do with that note that's different? Right. When you're going through all the junk mail and you're, oh, this is a bill, this is a bill, this is a bill, advertisement, 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 a magazine, some kind of sharp saver or whatever. And then you will, you get this little five by seven note card and it's handwritten. I don't know about you, but I just put everything aside and I open that sucker up right then. And I'm like, who is this from? And if I open it and it's on and they're just you know, letting me know that it was a good conversation. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, you know, being in my life, whatever, whoever that person is, go back and touch to something that you, you, that connection meant to you and send that to them in a note. When they open it, I promise you that will be a very different experience for them. They'll remember that contact. And the very next time you call them, it's going to be a super different conversation. Right. And then and then next call. How's everything going since the last time I talked to you? This is the time for that, guys. People are not receiving that. I promise you they're not getting that from their doctor, their lawyer, their accountant. It's not happening. People matter. And we need to show them that we care about this relationship, strengthen the relationship. And that goes back to the same thing. When it's time for them to do something by herself. They're going to remember you. They're going to um, remember how you made them feel, right? I've said this a million times and bears repeating. People don't care um, how much you know until they know how much you care, right? And people will forget what you did. They'll forget what you said, but they will remember always how you made them feel. So that goes back to now connecting and solidifying that, that connection, concreting that lead and cultivating them over time, which was the graph that, Joe, that John showed you yesterday with the, the wavy line, right? Wherever they bought and then ultimately where they sold. When it's time to sell and you've been in contact with them, I don't care if it's been seven months or seven years, you're going to be the choice. It's going to be easy for you at that point. John, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, I think uh, Shirley raised her hand. I think she has a question. Actually, hey, I just want, hi, everyone. I just wanted to make a comment. Um, I reached out on Friday to some uh, uh, people that I had dealt, had business with, and one of them was a title company that did the first closing in 2018, asking just how she's doing. I said, you may not remember me. She said, oh, yes, I do. She said, you sent me a card after the closing. That was from 2018. Wow. So, yeah, it worked. I was like, wow, when I got off the phone as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So, so now, now we've got, now we've got a, a, a sales pipeline, guys. Now we've got something going on, right? So we're co cultivating these people. We're putting, um, how many of you by a show of hands are using command and have tagged some people with groups that they belong to respectively? Like this is my church group. This, this is my um, clients that have sold already, past clients. The, these tags are super important because now when you want to send a specific message to a specific group, like I know Dean Martino has people who are tagged that are veterans. You should have anybody you've spoken to in your neighborhood that you know that's in your subdivision. They should be tagged like this is my subdivision. I've got people that are tagged that say Pelican Trail West or Wyndham Lakes. I know who they are, past clients, um, ha um, buyers, sellers. They should all be tagged with these things. That way you know what kind of lead they are. And when you want to do a campaign, now you can just grab uh, and go with these tagged groups. It's going to make things easier for you when you're thinking about setting up a campaign. Um, if you have not tagged them, um, we'll, during part of this, we're going to have Justin get on to help with some of the technology and some of the tagging and those kind of things. Also, don't um, hesitate to go on Jay Cermak's page. 
Um, he has videos for everything. And if you're like me and you sit in a in a class with Jay Cermak and he gets going and all of a sudden you're like, oh, my God, I'm so far behind. Like, I'll never catch up because he's fast. He's fast for me. I'm not a tech guru. Um, so what you can do is watch his videos. And that way you can pause Jay. I would love to do a live pause on Jay, but I can't pause him because he's the Energizer Bunny, you know. So you can pause him, catch up, and figure out where you went wrong. Just rewind and go back. How cool would that be if we had a remote where we could rewind Jay? That would be sick. And in those big groups, it's, it's you know, in those big groups, it's tougher to go ahead and, and you know, every time you fall behind, you're like, all right, I'm not even going to say anything. So now we sit back there uh, thinking that we can remember these things, and we don't. So go on Jay's uh, Facebook page. He's got every video to do everything that we're going to talk about in this module, right? So cultivating those leads, appointment, active, under contract, close. That's where we all want to go, right? Um, so prospect-based marketing enhanced. What else does that mean to you? We're going to get our leads because marketing gets the passive stuff, right? Marketing is I uh, put out a Facebook page and uh, ad on my page and people call me. People I know call me, right? And that's a strategy, I guess it is. I don't use a lot of Facebook marketing. I know that people are very successful. John Martino is one that's been really successful with the Facebook ads. Um, and it works if you work it. So I haven't worked it, so I'm not a good – uh, indicator of whether or not that works. I know that other people have had success, uh, similar success, and I know that Command has some fantastic opportunities to do um, Facebook marketing as well as Instagram and LinkedIn and so on and so forth. And for me, that is putting something out and waiting for something to be returned. I like to just get out there and go after it. And I know that everybody has different forms of lead generation. Matter of fact, we had an agent in the office that just did networking. He did networking groups uh, three times a week. Uh, the guy did $10 million in sales. Never picked up the phone call to call anybody, right? Pretty awesome. Build that group. I don't care what you do to lead generate, just lead generate, right? Marketing enhanced. So that's the other piece. You get listings, go ahead and put them up on your Facebook page. And now we have the ability to put them up on the Facebook page where they click for more information or click because they wanted to see the rest of the home and it drags them back to your landing page, right? And it captures a lead. You get to decide how it's captured. It's a little more advanced, but ultimately it's all lead generation and it's all with the intent to capture a lead and go ahead and move forward to now concreting that relationship and starting to market to them with our 36 touch plan. Um, any questions so far? Or if you have some ahas that you'd like to share, unmute yourself and, and share that with us. I'm an awesome instructor. Well, I think everybody's got this down. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, when you we're talking about marketing based and prospecting enhanced, remember in, in the shift book, chapter two says, uh, reimagine your expenses. And in a shifting market, we know we have to cut all unnecessary expenses, we have to cut, uh, we have to, you know, cut our expenses by half just to maintain the amount of business that we have right now. All right. Marketing is expensive. All right. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's very money intensive. Whereas by lead generation, it's, 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 it's free. All right. Essentially it's free. It takes more time, but it's, but it's free. And in a shifting market, yeah, you want to get away from your marketing and go, uh, go prospecting heavy. Yeah, for sure. I want to share a video with you. Um, I need to reshare this page now. Uh, bear with me a second. And I got to make sure that we have the, have the audio on. So, John, do you have some – can you see that page first? Yes. Um, okay. Over on the top where it has – where it says that you're sharing, view options – all right, it should say something like uh, play computer sound.
Okay, got it here. Generation is the first thing you should do. Make those calls. I took what I already knew and how I would go and shop for a house and just applied it to them. It's a numbers game, you know. If you can track how many people you're calling in a day and how many hours you're doing this, there's a formula. To make those calls. I used those things that I did innately to attract my clients. I became a hyper-local expert in the military because I am a military spouse. The two key things that I did to, to generate the most success uh, for me were social media and open houses um, because I didn't have the database like everybody else did. So I had to find ways that I could get in front of people fast and um, also something that would be maybe ha the buyer or seller would be ready and willing to buy now versus later. And I'm lead generating specifically in an area that is military friendly, military heavy. It really is in the follow-up. Be present in their lives, build a relationship. Uh, don't just ask for business every single time you see them. Be present in their lives, build the relationship. The least effective marketing activities for me, we're cold calling. And that's just because my niche market, they're not gonna be already local, they're gonna be moving from other bases. Then I decided, well, if I'm gonna leverage cold calling, let's do it more purposeful and let's do it only in my niche market where I know that there's military there, they're likely to buy or sell in three to four years. Mindset was a huge part of my success. One of the things I tell myself uh, for an open house is one good lead every time. And so I start that action at least a week beforehand. I do a social media campaign. I follow up with all the likes and comments. And then I do a door knock around the, the open house. And then I uh, follow up with anybody who is um, active at the open house. And usually that results in at least one buyer or seller leads, usually more. So my first year, obviously, you know, the minute I made the change, it's super scary. I've got a network of people still reaching out to me to, um, you know, help them with what I was doing before, which was post-production. And I knew that my job in the beginning of the year, starting out, was changing people's mind from thinking if they met somebody who needed a commercial made, they thought of me. I knew my job was to change all the people who knew and trusted me when they heard somebody needed to buy a house or sell their house, they thought of me. You know, if you're starting out and you don't have that network, be really intentional about where you spend your time. You go get gas, you could meet somebody who needs to buy a house. Just think that way and you'll attract that to yourself. I think everybody likes to talk about real estate. Your job is for people to know that you are in real estate and that they will bring it up. Open houses are by far just the best thing you should do out of the gate every weekend, each day. Starting out, I did door knocking, I did mailing, I didn't get a great return, but I would totally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change that. If I was starting out again, I would door knock. It's just talking to people, getting rejected, uh, you know, it's great experience no matter what. Um, I'll also say that the most important thing is that your lead generation strategy is coming from a place of authenticity. You're not going to get every client in the city, but there are people out there that are going to resonate with who you are um, and just figure out a way to bring value. The income is secondary. That's how I go about it. And I think that really resonates with my, obviously with my set of people that I take care of. My lead generation strategies in the beginning were a challenge. Um, I actually honestly believed when I first started that lead generation was cold calling and door knocking. So I kind of stayed away from that. I was fearful, I was anxious. But over the course of the business, the things that were innate to me, uh, networking, open houses, facilitating classes, it allowed me the opportunity to connect. And I start to see that as opportunities for lead gen. And it was far more effective for me because it was natural. I, let me just go back. When I became a new agent from the time that I was in Ignite and graduated from Ignite in October, 
November, December, I closed with eight transactions in just three months. And during that period of time, I noticed a developmental gap. And and I say this to say, I was spurred to partner and collaborate with some other agents and create master classes as well as launch and learns monthly to share, um, you know, mindset, motivational speaking. And through this, I was able to build a community or I was able to build a group and a network broader than myself that basically helped others in home buying and also with other agents to help build their skill sets. It has put me and set me apart from other agents. Lead gen pitfalls that I've seen agents do are just be cookie cutter. Looking at a successful agent or looking someone looking at someone else and doing exactly what they do doesn't necessarily work for everyone. Scripts gave me more confidence to to be able to know what to say when I was talking to certain clients. Also, there's different approaches to different questions that may be asked. So instead of looking at scripts as, oh, I have to memorize this verbatim, it was a resource to gain knowledge and, and definitely helped me to build confidence, even though I was not planning on using it verbatim. I've always said my purpose is to empower and to elevate others to a level of excellence. And when I meet with my clients, I want to make sure that they have enough information and they feel empowered to make the decision. How can I do that? How can I help you to make you feel that once we've made this connection, you are elevated? With my time blocking for the first two hours of every day, I would do lead generation. And sometimes it would be four hours if I wasn't getting the productivity that week that I wanted. Um, and then I followed up with all of my clients and learned just lots of very successful habits through at night. I think that a lot of new agents want to try all different types of lead generation. They're not really honing any talent in one or two different lead generation. There's all kinds of different models, but they are not made for everybody. So this lead generation model for me was my sphere. I called my sphere every day. The number two way that I got business and did lead generation was open house. I found for me, the best way to connect was to be in front of them. People I already knew um, that I had built a relationship with where I had met at an open house and I had time to actually connect with them. The scripts that the Ignite program provided for me really worked because they... All right, so I just wanna stop right there because they're focusing on, can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Uh, they're focusing on things like open houses and things like that right now that don't necessarily per pertain to our current market. So I wanna talk about some ahas you got from watching that video, some things that you, that may have sparked something in your head. Anybody got some stuff that wanna share there? I like when the last lady was saying that she was feeling anxious and nervous, um, feeling that she had to probably follow someone else's, uh, like a cookie cutter. But then, she, you know, then uh, when she realized that, no, that she just has to be more personal and more herself and made it easier for her. Yeah, it all depends on how you prefer to work with people. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, what works for someone can exactly work for you. Right, what worked for John Dietz worked exactly for me. So that's the person I followed and you know, I made those phone calls and I've had success from that. You know, 85, and, and, and it's not super healthy uh, for me. I know that I was missing some things. I'm missing some database pieces to my business because 85% of my business came from people that I did not know, you know, uh, for sale by owners expired. But now those people are part of my database. And now those people are giving me referrals. So now they're people that I know, right? And I didn't focus on my sphere. I didn't focus on the people that I knew that really liked me and trusted me just because I've always been in business for myself in some form or fashion, uh, at least for the last like 15, 18 years. So I felt like, you know what? I'm not going to reach out to those people for help. I'm going to do this myself. And the reality is that's, that's a character flaw on my part because I would have had more business had I focused on the people that are in my sphere. Uh, and I know that's a piece of my business that I'm working on, um, that is growing. Uh, but I'd rather call a stranger when I first began because I felt like more comfortable that way. So I, I, everybody who you think you look at and seems super successful to you and so on, they, they are and they all have little flaws. So that's why you take your business model from different people and grow it the way it works best for you, right? And, and 
where you're strong, that's not where we're going to super focus on, right? Focus on our weaknesses because there's a bucket of business that everybody's missing. Even the people who are seasoned agents here, you're missing out on a bucket of business because you're, you're focusing on where you're strong. Focus on where you're weak. And if you add four or five, I mean, if you added 10 deals a year in areas that you're weak by just focusing on that, average commission is nine grand in Coral Springs on our price, sale price. That's $90,000 that we're leaving on the table because we don't want to get uncomfortable. So that's what you said. Uh, I don't know, feel nervous or anxious. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Lisa, you had something. Can I share? Yes. Um, being uncomfortable for me, because I've had a lot of um, anxiety and fear in 2019. So what I did is I did focus on my sphere big time. And that worked out for me. I did get it for sale by own a listing. Um, I did an, an event and I got two listings from that. But regarding the for sale by owner and the events, I was out of my comfort zone big time. I'm more comfortable speaking to people that I know. And uh, my, my phone calls come from care, not really, hey, I'm a realtor now, give me business. And it, and it, and it worked um, for me. So now I am in the process of, um, of calling for sale by owners and expired again, because <laughs> that I'm very, very uncomfortable doing it. I was doing it. And now with this happening, I feel like I've gone a little backwards, uh, being extremely uncomfortable with it because of the, the, the uh, um, virus and because I don't know what to say now because I can't go there and meet with them. Whereas before I was getting in there, I was calling them and I was getting in there. I, I had appointments. My other weak spot is my follow-up. So I kind of am learning about all my weak spots now and I, and I need to learn and grow from that. And I hope that, I hope that helped a little bit. Yeah. And I'm going to disagree with you, Lisa. Uh, you know what to say. You know what to say. In your heart, you know what to say. How are you doing? How can I help you? That's what you say, right? And this is not about business maybe with those people tomorrow, and yet maybe it is, okay? It may be. If they're super motivated, you're doing the right thing by calling a for sale by owner because you're out there to find the motivated. That's who we're focusing on, right? And with the unmotivated, we're also focusing on them. However, our focus is different. We're building a foundation to follow up. The key to this business and the key to making this work is building a solid foundation to follow up, finding out what challenges are facing them and letting them know how you can help them overcome it. Right? So this is a, this is that, that for sale by owner, that's not super motivated. That is a database call. That is a, how can I help you call? That's, that's a stay in contact because right now those people need professionals. They don't know it yet. It's your job to bring the value and let them see what you represent because price only matters in the absence of value. And the only reason why they didn't hire a real estate agent in the first place is because they think they can't afford it. However, you're going to represent the value that you can actually net them more money, even regardless of your commission. Right, and it takes time to cultivate those relationships. That's what you're doing when you're talking to a for sale by owner or an expired. You're finding the motivated or you're building a foundation with those that are not. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, just out of curiosity, um, the phone call for the for sale by owner <clears throat> and the expired, is it more um, when you're calling them, are you, are you, asking them how they're doing? Are you asking them if they've gotten any phone calls? Are you saying like exactly what are you saying with that phone call? Because it's going to be a little bit different now. And it's, and, and I know that we have to do with care. I think what happens with me is I had a script and I used it. And sometimes I would say, I don't know, something different. Mm -hmm. but I do care. Yeah. But the other part of me is kind of like, they don't know me. So do I call? Uh, I think what I'm trying to say is when you call, 
Are you asking them if they're getting any phone calls? Um, how is you, or, 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 or do you start with how are things going? I mean, how do you like do yeah. that? Yeah, so they got their property on the market, right? If they still have it on the market. The up, so here's the thing that people will really um, appreciate these days. Candor and authenticity, okay? Yeah, how are things going in this market? I'm just curious, you know what I mean? As an agent, we've, we're going through some really strange times. Um, and I was wondering, you know, as a for sale by owner, how are things going? You know, I'm talking to a lot of for sale by owners. I mean, first of all, before I even go to there, how's everybody? How's your family? How's everything going? You know, um, and and I'm talking to a lot of people who are still buying and selling real estate. Um, and I'm talking to some people who are like, yeah, uh, I'm glad this happened. Um, and, you know, when I did this, I thought I was just looking for an offer. Right now, I'm I'm going to take this house off the market. I I just didn't get a chance to take it off of Zillow yet. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm taking this, this off the market. That's an unmotivated seller. However, oh, okay. So now we're going to touch on the motivation in the first place, right? So why were you selling in the first place? Oh, I'm upsizing. I'm downsizing. Just had a baby. Uh, kids just graduated from school, whatever. You're going to take notes and keep this now in, in the information to start adding the information to your database. You're going to take this person and put them on a, uh, on a, uh, neighborhood nurture. You're going to get the info. You already have their address. You know, their subdivision. They got a phone number. Now you just need an email from them. So this is a call that you're going to make this a follow-up call. So what I'll say is on the scale of one to 10, one, you're absolutely not motivated to sell anymore. And you're going to take your home off the market for the, for this minute or 10, you still need to sell your house. You've got a job offer. You've got a sick relative who lives in a different state and you got to get to them. Where do you fall? one or 10, 10, I'm still motivated. I want to sell this house. I just, you know, I just need the right offer. Okay, great. If I was able to help you uh, and show you what we're doing to still sell homes. Matter of fact, my office, we just wrote 130 contracts for home sales this month, even regardless of this market. I mean, would that be helpful for you if I'm able to share with you what we're doing to still continue to sell homes? Right. So that's a different conversation, but just figure out where the conversation's going and slide into that mode. Is this follow up or is this a real opportunity to get a listing? Right. So then if I could share with you what I could do to get your home sold for more money in less time, even regardless of this market, would you at least want to see what I'm doing to cause that to happen? They may be like, yeah, I want to see it. Okay, great. Why don't we schedule a video chat call, um, a Zoom call? for let me know what, what time tomorrow works for you. Is three good or is five better? And now we're gonna have a video conference. We're gonna share with them a video on Matterport, show them what we're doing to still make sure people can view their home even though they don't want people walking through their house, right? And just discover what's important to them and their motivation. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you so much for that. I appreciate you, thank you. My, my pleasure. So, so anybody else with some ahas, because we're going to wrap it up here in a minute and let you guys get to your lead generation. Hi. Good morning. Hey, Neil. What's up? So one thing that really stood out to me was that, you know, making your lead generation more purposeful. I'm very new to this. I'm brand new to this. Uh, John could tell you that. And, yep. you know, I'm coming from a different country. So, my circle, my sphere is in that country. So I don't have much contacts here. So how can I use, what can I use? Can I use the expired listings now to try to create a sphere? Like what, what, would, what would you suggest? Yeah, you're on the right track. Those lists that we're sending out, they're for sale by owners and there's expireds. And you know what? You're going to get some pushback. You're going to get some other people. But these people raise their hands. I don't feel uncomfortable calling them at all. They raise their hand so they want to sell their property, right? So we can call those people and just find out what their needs are, right? It, it's, a, it's, it's a different conversation, and yet it's the same conversation because we're going to start off with a little more care, and we're going to be a little more candid with them. Hey, look, it's a crazy market. You still want to sell your house, <laughs> right? Because if you want to sell your house, you're going to have to employ some very different strategies. Putting it on Zillow just doesn't cut it anymore. So if you're a 10 and you still want to sell your house, 
you're going to have to take some different actions than what you were doing before. And if I can share with you what we're doing to still sell 130 homes a month, would you at least, that would cause you to sell your home for more money, regardless of my commission, in less time, when less hassle and stress for you. Would you want to see how I could do that? It's the same conversation. We're just leading into it differently. They're going to have the same objections, and then we can use our handlers. What we need to do is just lead into it differently, and it's the same conversation. When you've got a motivated buyer or seller on the phone, it's the same conversation. Where are you moving to? Motivation. Yeah, why is that important right now with everything that's going on? Why is it important? So it's the same conversation, just a little bit of a different lead in and a little bit of a different feel attached to it because the market's weird. And just say, hey, listen, this market is weird. Like they know it, right? Everybody's going, oh, what do I say? Say what's going on. How you guys doing? How you guys separate toilet paper? I mean, you know, this is what's happening in our world right now, you know, right? So we can advertise your home with the, you know, a free case of toilet paper when you move in. I mean, it's it. Listen, this is what's this is what's happening. Be real with these people because this is a real, real time. They're gonna look for that when they're speaking with you, like you're a real person, right? You're going through the same thing that they are. You guys are connected on all levels. Just be real with these people. So, um, Mike, so let's just say that I make calls today and I will make calls today, actually. And one of them says, okay, I would like to list with you. I love how our conversations are going. I like, you know, then what's the next step from there? What, what do I say that I don't, I don't want to sound like, okay, um, what do I say, you know? Yeah, yeah. so those are great conversations. Um, and... Your next step, again, goes back to listening presentations, Zoom calls, and so on. But you'll get in touch with us, your, your coaches, right, okay. me and John, and we'll guide you through the next steps. Get the leads. Go out there. Don't worry about, the, don't worry about what's going to happen if I actually get these. You have help, right? We're here for you. Okay. We can set up a Zoom call for you. Be on it with you. That's what you need to know to move forward, that you have support. Okay. And you do. That's all I needed to know. All right. I'm on it. <laughs> uh, any other ahas or questions before we wrap, guys? Rose Angela, go ahead. Yeah. I just want to share with you guys uh, that um, I had an appointment on March 12, which got canceled uh, with a family, with a small kids, newborn, and the lady was not comfortable on getting uh, me to go to her house uh, to, to view her house. And, uh, but um, due to the fact that we got canceled, um, I wasn't happy, but under, uh, of course, I'm understanding the situation. Uh, but I am doing a follow-up with the family. Uh, on March uh, 16 was a Monday. I did, uh, um, I contacted her with um, the uh, message, of course, but no response from her, but uh, it's fine. Uh, I think she has uh, a lot on her plate right now. And also yesterday I sent a very, uh, I mean, I, as, as much as I can do, I sent her a message um, saying how she was doing, how is the family doing and I informed them that we are out of our office, but we are reaching out families and friends to give support and hope that uh, you know, our life will go back to normal and we regain kind of our freedom because right now we are in a situation. Uh, telling her to take care of her family and, uh, uh, and then in case if she needs any help uh, for her to let me know. So. I have got no response, but uh, at least uh, uh, if she is in need of help, um, you know, she knows that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do my best. So reaching out to people. Yeah, and continue to do that. If you don't get a response, don't be in judgment, be in curiosity, right? What else, what else, what the, they might be really going through something and you're just following up with them is gonna be super helpful. And, and I, I keep hearing about, what should I say? What should I, you should say what's in your heart. Like that's exactly a great example of that. Just say, Hey, you know what? 
I know what's going on. I, I, you know, how can I help you? Is this, these are, these, these are not scripts guys. These are real life. Just reach out and, and talk to people. That's it. Communication is the key here. Anybody else? All right. Well, if you like today's class, my name is Mike Trelongo. And if you didn't like it so much, my name is Wayne Hockrow. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like my quarantine beard? It's coming in. What do you think? It, your picture's too dark because the light is in the, behind you. We you cannot gotta, see your face. can't sit. You have to be on the yeah, light. It's coming in. I'm not shaving it until this is over. So who knows what it's going to look like. Yeah, you're going to look like Howard Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> the way things yeah, are going. Go ahead, Alan. Is, um, do you guys know if anybody's having any uh, virtual open houses or if you guys are having any virtual open houses this weekend coming up? John, you have any input on that? I don't. That would be a really good question because I'd like to see what some people are what some people are doing. Um, so I think one of the things you can do is maybe just post it on the KWCS page, not the productivity page, but the the KW page, and just just to get an idea. Hey, who's ho who's hosting an open uh, a virtual open house? What does that look like? What does that How do you look get like? There if it's uh, FaceTime getting through there. Um, is that a FaceTime or is that a, you know what, yeah, there's what some, there's like? some videos, there's some videos online, um, of creating, doing uh, virtual open houses and how some best practices of some of the things that people have done. Um, if I find, I'm going to take a look and see if I can find it. If I find one, I'll go ahead and, uh, uh, put it on the Facebook group. Alan, have you seen something that alluded to a virtual open house or anything to share on that subject? Alan's yeah, frozen. frozen. Okay. All right. We'll see what we can dig up. Not yet. No, I was going to see if, any, if you guys are doing anything. Um, I haven't seen anything. Right, Alan, Alan, you're not coming through. Digital on us. Yeah. All right. We'll see what we can dig up and then yeah. go from there and provide any contact. Uh, content that we have. There you are, Alan. You're alive again. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we'll see what we can dig up and share it with the group. Um, and we'll be back for Ignite uh, tomorrow morning. Same bad time, same bad channel. There you go. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. All right, guys. Make it a great day. Get out there and get busy. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Guys. All right. Thank Take you. care now. Bye. Uh -huh.